Good morning, fellow YouTubers. Scott Watts here at Wattsway Farms. I'm back on the farm today. I actually had to go out of town for a couple days. My home, which is a few hours south of here, we're in the process of trying to get it on the market, get it sold so that we can build a house up here on the farm. And we had a some damage from Hurricane Sally that came through a few months ago, took down a big pecan tree and a big section of my fence and I actually went home to finish repairing that fence so that we can finally get that house on the market. Now as much as I hate not being here to check on my my cows, my calves, and my pigs every single day, it's inevitable that from time to time uh, I have to go out of town. And as you can hear the calves from the background, they are not liking it when I go out of town. What I do is I put them back in the calf pen. So here they are in the calf pen. They do not like it here. They very much want to be back out on the pasture, which I'm about to move them. I threw a, the hay ring in the back part. I don't know if it'll show up. It will a little bit. So put a bale of hay in there. They've got water, they got mineral. So I got everything they need, but they're not out on the open grass with the, or the open pasture with the stockpile grass and, um, you know, and being able to roam and eat that, which they clearly prefer. So we're going to move them back to the, to their pasture that they be, they've been in the paddock that I, the big paddock that I set up that I, you know, I'm rotating them through. So we're going to do that. And then we're also going to, uh, start on the the big paddock for the main herd. So here's the main herd and they've been same thing. I don't like, I like to kind of put them in a little bit more confined space though. It's pretty big. This is kind of my main pasture. It's got the three strands of high tensile that run from here all the way down to the property line. And then from here, down the property line that way. Now the other two sides are five strand barbed wire, but this is plenty to hold them in. And you know, and the same thing though, I've never really had an issue with them trying to get out from the single strand um, poly that I rotate them through. When I'm not here, I just feel better about having them here. Now these guys, I put two bales of hay out, which just for the three days I was gone, they um, took a pretty good chunk out of it. I mean, there's, I think there's still some grass that they probably could have eaten in here, but you know, when the hay's right there, they just go after it. Now the plan had been, this is about a seven, eight acre pass, pasture right here. And the plan had been to kind of run them through this again, mainly just to give another fertilized treatment uh, for, to the ground before the spring grass starts growing. But since I was going out of town for a few days, I figured I would just I opened it up and gave them the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get them off of this today, depending on how the day goes. It'll be today or tomorrow uh, at the latest before I do that. Thought I'd also show y'all my water setup that makes it so that I can go out of town for a couple days when needed and not have to worry as much about their water. Now, I'll be honest, the water is my single biggest concern of leaving them out of town for a couple days because there's no standing water in this pasture. And if something was to happen uh, to this tank, this is a 150 gallon Rubbermaid stock tank that I picked up at Tractor Supply they you know, would quickly run out of water and not have any. Now what I do use, and I think a lot of you are familiar with this, is just the Job valve. Um, and you know, it's hooked up so that as they drink it down, this float goes down, you know, and turns on the water. And then once it fills back up, um, it shuts off. So they constantly have water. And this is just hooked, you know, to, I have pressurized water here. So this is water from the city. It's not pond fed or anything like that. And I use these Plawson. Uh, I've got these down this side every several hundred feet. And I mentioned these in another video, but I really like these um, Plawson uh, Quick Connect. So that's the way it sits. I keep 
um, just as in a little valve cover of the box. I use this little red stake just to kind of mark them and because I've got them a few more you can't see in the camera but they they go that way and the other direction and so that I can provide water and then I just pull the cover off flip that up and then this you know so the water is no water coming out but the water's charged right behind that valve then this goes in easy peasy and now there's water um like I said this I've, I've honestly I've used these I put these here before I got the cows this was my plan and I've honestly other than a little bit of leaking down around the fittings you know the washer worn out which wouldn't keep them from getting water it just creates a little bit of a puddle situation a bit of a waste and a higher water bill I've never had any trouble with these they work I mean beautifully um I had you know I'm I'm worried about the cow stepping in it during the summer and maybe breaking the valve. So I typically run a piece of poly over the top, you know, just to kind of make it where they can only put their heads in and nothing else. I've actually did have a calf jump into one in the calf pen uh, this past summer, jumped right out, didn't hurt anything. But my, my fear has always been that something will happen to this when I'm out of town and then the cows will run out of water. I'm going to this year put in a well and a couple, you know, bigger uh, water tanks in the 300 gallon range with a high density uh, pad underneath. And, I'm, and that just maybe give them multiple water sources, probably continue to use this and those to better alleviate my concerns of, you know, something happened to them. Like I said, these things work great. I've never had any issue with them. Uh, the herd likes it and uh, don't have any trouble finding and drinking out of it. So, there's another video I did a week or so ago where I talked about how I used to run a lane uh, to move the cows from one area to another. So, what in the past, what I would have done was I would have come off each side of this gate with some poly braid and run the lane all the way back over there to the pasture I'm gonna move them to. But I quit doing that. Now I just use my uh, bucket of cubes, uh, range cubes. This is less than a third full, maybe a third full. And as you can see, they, they very much like the range cubes. Even my boxer dogs like the range cube. And I don't get, use a whole lot of range cubes. And we have had some discussions, my wife and I, and on calling ourselves a grass-fed operation and using range cubes. And I've been you know, on the various Facebook pages and whatnot. There does seem to be a bit of controversy there. I mean, I do consider my herd grass-fed. Now, I do know for a fact that this there is some grain uh corn and molasses or whatnot in in these range cubes and that that is not um obviously a grass fed um i think the feeding instructions according to the bag is like three pounds of this per head per day but i'm not using anywhere near that i mean a 50 pound bag of range cubes will last me a few weeks i mean i use so little of it it is literally a training treat uh to you know keep these beautiful little animals going where i want them to go and as such i just i don't know um maybe i should be more of a purist but i think 22 head of cattle and i'm only using like i said a bag 150 pound bag every several weeks this does not I think negate the fact that they are grass fed but i'd love to know what you think if you agree or disagree leave it in the comments below um and let me know what you think should i switch to a pure grass um cube i make the alfalfa cubes but my gosh those things are almost double the cost of these traditional range cubes and you know as a farmer and especially just getting started the pennies matter and so every you know few dollars extra i spend here or there definitely goes into the very low margins that we already um have in trying to you know be in this industry so 
Oh, uh, let me know what you think. So with that, let's get to moving these guys. So that went about as easy as, again, as could be expected. I, In retrospect, I might should have put my dogs up. They've taken as much of a liking for the range cubes as the cows do. And as you can see, they are not liking having to compete with each other for the cubes. And, you know, the cows did it. I don't know if it showed up on the camera or not, but the cows did get a little distracted on this. And there's a little bit of a green clover and grass right in this area that caught their attention and so they went to that but a few more rattles of the bucket and they all walked in and and again so i started with about a third of a bucket of cubes and barely used half of what i got i mean they absolutely love these range cubes i mean they are not shy when it comes to eating them um and they won't all eat them out of my hand but most of them will and you can see this one annie she's quite vocal when it comes to her getting her range cube so again it's a good training tool i think um and you know get them where i want them to be and shoot i i kind of like it um so again i don't think that negates my grass-fed status but I don't know, maybe based on your comments, if I get a bunch of them, uh, we'll see. And as I kind of expected, the main herd has congregated right here by the gate, though I wasn't anywhere near them. Their hearing is good enough where they heard the shaking of the range cube bucket and they know that sound. And so they came over here to see if there was any going to be coming their way. They look like a bunch of people camped out in line for the latest iPhone uh, release. I mean, I got the my bull and one of my cows sitting on the ground. I mean, they are camped out ready, which, you know, I will do the same thing with them later on today or tomorrow when I run their big paddock and get them out of this pasture and move them into my back pasture. But for now, alas, no range cubes for them. Alrighty, well the calves are moved into their back into their pasture or this paddock. I gave them a little bit more down this side and probably this was over here the day before I moved them as well. Um probably half a day and this little bit of extra strip along the side. So probably tomorrow morning I'll get up and come on out and move them over there and may start doing a back fence so that they don't over manure this place but as you can see the water's in place the minerals way down at the other end you can't see it i used to put the mineral 
right closer to the water so i thought i'd read or saw somebody say the mineral should be close to the water source but then i was went back and re-watching a greg judy video from i don't know several months ago i forget when it was and then he had mentioned in that when it, you put the mineral as far away from the water so that it kind of spreads manure more and it's kind of like a duh moment for me so i went duh yeah it makes perfect sense thank you greg for sharing that and making me and then taking me a couple times watching it for it to sink in so i put it down there of course they're not eating a whole lot of mineral this time of year which is surprising to me i feel like they eat more during the summer when they had all this fresh grass than they are during the winter now that they're on hay but whatever so the fence is back on i got my trusty fence tester here to always see as i um, i've mentioned i'm a i'm forever checking uh my fences and i don't know i think 9900 volts that's a pretty hot fence so that should work a little hamburger that's what we call him he's always curious and a little bull calf my nephew named alex is starting to become more curious and less standoffish um murda uh enjoying the water and then my other two calves looking forward to the springtime june july i forget the exact date when i can put them back with the main herd and put them into the breeding production if you will so that's all for today i'm going to sign off uh hope you all have a good day i've got to get to the office i'm actually a little late this morning but um we'll get there and get to work and hopefully i'll see y'all back here soon thanks for tuning in please leave me some comments if you have any uh would love to hear some have a good day see y'all